What's going on guys and welcome to today's video and as you can see we've got something a little bit interesting and special in the garage today and no I didn't buy it no I can't afford it but I was lucky enough to have my good friend Tyler Hoover of Hoovy's Garage throw me the keys to his 2006 Lamborghini Murcielago and asked if I wanted to take it out and actually took it out to cars and coffee this morning and got to line it up with some of his other cars. So had a good time out there today at cars and coffee, but the big thing is getting to do a kind of my normal thing, walk around and take this thing out on a drive. So as you can see, we have the Hoovy's Garage 2006. Lamborghini Murcielago with, of course, the dumb tag, which goes with his dumber tag on his Lamborghini Countach. Now, this is the Roadster form, obviously, as you can see. And of course, when you take a Roadster Lamborghini out, you have to take the top off. You, you can't drive it with the toupee on it. That's just not very cool. You, you've got to be open air driving experience. Now, this will be my first E-gear transmission vehicle because as you can tell, there is only two pedals down there and it is a e-gear which is automated manual transmission it is still a manual transmission at its core but it is automatically shifted by the vehicle the clutch controls and the shifter controls are obviously controlled but you do have the paddle shifters and you do have to select what gearing all of that kind of stuff but there is no clutch pedal now this will be my first e-gear transmission vehicle i have driven and obviously like you can see you've got the paddle shifters here you've got your reverse gear selector so that will be very interesting seeing how that feels how that works how smooth it is because paired with that transmission is the v12 making 631 horsepower and here we will take a quick glance at this thing and the cage built over that v12 is really really cool looking again very very cool looking but the serviceability looks to be very inconvenient since you would have to unbolt the cage to do almost anything but there's just a lot of parts we've got four different throttle bodies all of the different intake ducting, and then way down below, you can see all of the accessories. So I think it is time to take this thing out and see how this E-Gear Mercy Lago drives down the road. Now guys, obviously one of the coolest things about a Mercy Lago is the Lambo doors, of course, because they do work in traditional Lamborghini fashion, up and down, it just, it definitely makes you look like you are somebody when you're rolling up and throwing your door up. Now, one thing Tyler did tell me is the Lamborghini alarm system is very, very interesting. Now, for Lamborghini people, this may not be anything. But for myself, I thought it was very interesting that you still always need to hit the unlock button even if the vehicle wasn't previously locked, I guess. So the theft alarm system doesn't alert and set the horn off and, and make you look like you're not that cool person that rolled up with your Lamborghini doors. So I've already disarmed the immobilizer module and we should be ready to fire this thing up. Now this 06 doesn't have any crazy push button start. It has a traditional key. It is a switchblade key, but it does still have that traditional key that goes into your ignition switch and with a quick twist it fires up and in that supercar sound you get that long crank to a nice startup another thing that is interesting to myself is the seat belts as you saw i reached for the wrong side because the seat belts go from the center of the vehicle 
over to the outside of the vehicle. Now guys, another thing which is really cool, which yes, I know is common on many things, but this 06 does have axle lift, which makes it really, really nice getting up and down steep incline. So you aren't just completely worried about ripping the nose off of the car. So first thing with the e-gear, you fire it up, you're in the neutral position. You've got your parking brake here on the left side, but to pull forward, you grab your plus paddle, pull it in, and then you have an indicator on the dash that you are in first gear. So once you're in first gear, it pretty much just drives like a normal vehicle. Once you pull away, it, like I said, it drives very similar to a normal vehicle. You give it a little bit of throttle input and the clutch starts applying and then you are moving very comfortably. And then shifting, you have just a quick shift of the paddle. It momentarily cuts throttle and then goes to the next gear and it feels relatively seamless. Now roll the window up so we can hopefully talk a little bit better. But what you hear while driving, you hear a lot of engine noise and no, not bad engine noise, but you hear the valve train, you hear the intake noise, you hear the exhaust note, you just, you hear a lot of noise and really good noise right behind you since that big V12 lives in the back seat. Now slowing down, I was, I was idling through that street in third gear and rolled onto the brakes and it did automatically downshift with that e-gear transmission. So you don't have to downshift in this case. Now visibility, I was really, really interested to see how poor the visibility was. Honestly, I am pleasantly surprised. Yes, this is the Roadster and yes, the top is off, but you still have a decent rear view out of the back. You do have a very big engine cover poking up in your line of sight, but you can still see what you need to see. And honestly, the squinty side mirrors work very, very well. Now ride quality, ride quality seems very, very smooth. Yes, it's on low profile performance tires, but it seems very, very smooth, very compliant. Steering doesn't seem mushy. It, it obviously feels like a performance sports car. No, I don't have a lot of experience in tons and tons of exotic cars, but at least this going down the road feels really, really nice, really, really smooth. Nothing is horrible on ergonomics. I'm a tall guy, I'm six foot three. Now, obviously we don't have a top on the car, so that's going to definitely allow infinite headroom, but I am comfortably sitting in here. My knees are not buried into the steering wheel. I've got enough room that I could drive this enthusiastically without worrying about hitting my knees and, and knocking into all the controls. Downshifting seems to be extremely quick and snappy almost quicker than the upshifts. Now we'll go jump on the highway real quick and do a moderate acceleration here and see how it feels. Now we are in second gear and we're gonna roll into power. <laughs> okay, so this thing really, really comes into power, comes into torque at a higher RPM. Once you're over about 4,000 RPM, it really, really comes alive and feels really, really special. The charm of that e-gear transmission is also really, really fun under hard acceleration. You've got that kind of longer delayed shift and then it gets back on power and moves very, very well. Because under normal light driving at really low RPM, it really does not feel like a crazy animal. It feels very subdued, very tame. But once we did that acceleration and got it up on speed on the highway, it really, really came into its own. Now for the gauges, you've got everything you need. We've got coolant temp, we've got oil temperature, our fuel gauge, 
oil pressure, obviously our tack speedometer, and it's all laid out very clear and easy to read. Now, what creature comforts are we with here? No, you don't have big, massive screens and infotainment, but you do have a singled-in CD radio. You've got your HVAC controls that do cover with this really cool little Lamborghini inscripted cover. But in this car, you really don't want to distract yourself from driving, from the experience, and mainly from that noise. I, I don't know if I own this car that I would ever have that radio turned on because you're always gonna be listening to that engine behind you. Now this one does have a really, really interesting interior treatment. Obviously, as you guys can see, we've got the orange creamsicle color inserts with orange stitching, but what is really interesting is the tan leather because on the left side of the vehicle, all the way until the center line, you've got perforated leather, but from this center line over, it is solid non-perforated leather. I'm sure that was some outrageously expensive option that is super rare and there was only one made with it, but it's a very, very interesting treatment that you wouldn't see on any other vehicle out there. Now, one thing I have noticed in the very short amount of time driving this bright orange Lamborghini with no top on it is literally everybody is turning and looking at you and trying to figure out who you are because at least in the Wichita area, you are not often seeing bright orange Lamborghinis driving down the road. I've gotten a bunch of people giving me thumbs up, yelling nice car. So it's definitely a special experience getting to drive this thing. Well guys, let's do one more good acceleration here. Yeah, that, that exhaust noise puts a smile on your face every single time. Now guys, what a absolutely awesome opportunity this was to drive this thing and what a awesome driving experience it is. Now, like I said, low down in the RPMs, it doesn't feel terribly powerful. It doesn't feel outrageous. But when we pulled on to the highway and got the thing up in its power band, it really, really moved. You could feel that 631 horsepower. It definitely felt like it had all of it. It didn't feel like a slouch. It definitely moved extremely well. Driving position, vehicle ride, everything felt really, really good. And I don't know if I should be surprised or not because I guess I was assuming it was going to be a less than ideal driving experience, but that thing drove really, really well. It did everything you'd want it to do. It made all of the right noises. And I think that's what these things are all about is that driving experience. Because the way that thing makes you feel when you're accelerating and when you're driving and the looks and smiles that you get while you are out on the road make it all even more special while driving. So guys, I really, really got to thank my good buddy Tyler Hoover of Hoovy's Garage for letting me take one of his personal cars out and experience it out on the road. So again, thank you. But guys, thanks for coming along on another interesting ride, test drive, review, whatever we want to call it. And thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.